Hello, I'm Maurice Suckling and my talk is called The Player's Journey, Alternative Paradigms of Structure Through Audience Agency. Audience agency in storytelling is not new. We see it amongst other places in Aboriginal oral storytelling traditions. It seems likely audience agency existed right at the birth of storytelling itself. Be that as it may, in games, immersive theatre and other interactive spaces where player agency is often central to a story driven experience, something of a paradigmatic magnitude can occur, changing the nature of narrative structure itself. What? OK, so to back up, player agency can be more than merely an aspect of a narrative that increases the breadth of its structure. I'm suggesting player agency can be more than merely a complication of structure through the generation of multitudes of linear narrative paths. I'm suggesting that player agency is a dimension through which we may do more than see the same hero's journey template fractured into multiple, but essentially predictable, non-changeable paths. So the argument I'm going to attempt to make is this. Player agency fundamentally alters the nature of narrative structure itself by facilitating a relationship with conceptual space. Conceptual space is anywhere a story happens. We could call this a story world, but should be aware that its meaning here is intended to convey more than merely the conventional narrative elements of a story, but also includes the narrative design elements of the interactive space. By this, I mean the intersecting network of game or interactive systems that facilitate what we might call non-scripted player experiences. In an interactive experience about, for example, depression, the existence of a series of doors permitting gateways of transit through a story world might work against what that experience really ought to be about, which might instead be about how doors don't open or they disappear or they lead nowhere, or they move around, or perhaps they're unattainable or lead places, but those places are always worse, in some ways smaller, more confined, with fewer options than before, or whatever the case may be. Ultimately, the way we approach interactivity and agency in many respects really is the story and really is the meaning of the space. The space is not merely the container for a story. The story cannot be decanted into a meaning agnostic receptacle within which its contents are experienced. We cannot pour a story from a book into an iPhone game, then into a board game and into a console game without in each instance altering some critical aspects of its nature. Instead, I suggest the way in which we permit, restrict and encourage interactivity with any conceptual, within any conceptual space is really enmeshed in the essence of the potential meaning of that story itself. The medium is the message, we might say. But there is more here uh, to say. My contention is that narrative structure isn't merely two dimensional in the sense that it's about the placement of key elements along a linear X axis towards the return of the elixir. The hero's journey template tells us that each structural element is held in place by its relationship to the other elements preceding and following it. I suggest narrative structure in interactive space can better be thought of as three dimensional. There are linear structures along one axis within a story world, but there is also movement between, uh, movement through a story world where multilinear connections can be formed by players operating within that story world's narrative systems. It follows then that the different affordances of player agency in different conceptual spaces, different narrative systems, can engender different kinds of relationships with structure within that space. We uh, talk about a few case studies. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is an analog game that allows players to work their own way through a series of detective cases, determining their own connections with their own pacing. The story has already occurred, so the player is not changing its outcome. Instead, the player is engaging with the game system in such a way that they are extracting their own dramatic tensions and dramatic ironies by exercising their own agency in conjunction with a pliable game system. Players read an introductory paragraph establishing key facts of a case and then have the freedom to decide what to do next. Instead of choosing from one of a number of choose your own adventure style preset options, the game system gives players no paragraph number to turn to. Players use the map of London or other maps as appropriate. The London directory, alphabetically listing people, businesses and institutions, a list of informants, potential regular helpers like Inspector Lestrade and Mycroft Holmes, 
and bespoke fictional newspapers boxed within the game to decide on a location to visit next. If the location is not relevant to the current case, players will find no reference to it inside the casebook. If the location is relevant, the casebook will give players some text to read about who or what they find at that location and any conversations that occur there. From here, players then return to the open world of the game system to decide where to go next. The narrative system is closed insofar as only as much content as the designers want to present that is relevant to the case or seemingly relevant exists. Yet it is also open in that players must find the locations of potential relevance themselves. The effort required of players rewards them with a sense of achievement. Elite is an early computer game where players construct their own narratives through systemic or emergent storytelling, whereby a story emerges through the game system with players either shaping themselves as elite traders or elite pirates within the vastness of space. In such a system, players' actions Player actions carry cumulative moral weight, and the resulting narrative can swing between a player as a trader and a pirate any number of times. The success in either endeavor is always dependent on a player's abilities in managing income, expenditure, navigation, shooting, and decisions over ship upgrades. Fiasco is a tabletop RPG analog storytelling game hybrid where players construct a story together utilizing a tightly organized game structure in conjunction with an improvisational storytelling uh, in conjunction with improvisational storytelling skills using die rolls cross reference with bespoke playsets designating specific thematic meanings players establish relationships needs locations and objects before playing out act 1 one scene at a time each scene a player taking turns to establish who is in the scene or resolving how it ends at the end of each scene players uh, at the end of each scene characters will receive varying numbers of white or black dice denoting good or bad endings at the tilt further playset specific complications are introduced and then players play out act two one scene at a time keeping any white or black dice they are allocated players then roll these dice to help them determine the ultimate fate of their character in the aftermath section of the game. Sleep No More is an immersive theatre experience where audience members wander around a warehouse with degrees of freedom to experience snippets of a story they must splice together and will be significantly different depending on the routes taken in the warehouse and the sequence in which these snippets of stories are encountered. Audience members must decide which parts of the accessible space to occupy and when and decide which characters they might decide to follow between scenes. Only at the end of the play are audience members ushered into a specific space where they experience culminating scenes to encapsulate their overall experience. Her Story is a video game where players access a search engine to mine a police database of short videos to attempt to reconfigure a fractured narrative into a coherent understanding. Each short video provides hyperlinked access to other search engine terms and videos so players carve out their own route through causal connections to discern what truths they can from the content. Depending on the different paths players take through this search engine, they will experience different dramatic ironies and reversals or revelations at different structural junctures. What do these case studies in their own rather different ways tell us? They are assure, there are assuredly limitations to all of these experiences and the interactive systems all give the impression of greater audience agency than in truth is genuinely available. It's also true to say these games don't show how story structure is altered insofar as we still have reversals and revelations, misdirections and obstacles to understanding. But through the three-dimensional nature of conceptual space that is interactive, we can alter the sequence in which an audience experiences those reversals, revelations, misdirections and obstacles to understanding. Sherlock Holmes consulting detective, for example, we can learn a suspect could not have been the killer early or late on. If early, if early on, our, sus our suspicions quickly fall to other characters. If late on, we may harbour those suspicions for several hours, substantially altering the kind of experience we have as a player and the thought processes that occupy us. We don't even need complex technology to do this. B.S. Johnson's The Unfortunates from 1969, a novel bound in a series of loose chapters with only the opening and closing chapters defined in a set sequence and all the other chapters randomly packaged between these two and readers encouraged to choose their own reading sequence shows that this is not a new idea. 
Equally, this novel in a box highlights how player or audience agency, the ability to have some impact on the narrative systems to interact with them, is critical to the structural complications, structural implications under discussion. So to recap, I'm suggesting that when a player does something within an interactive story world, that story world may provide them with experiences that alter the sequence of a narrative structure. Further, the nature of an interactivity, uh, the nature of the interactivity available can also significantly influence the meaning of a story world, uh, the meaning a story world evokes for a player. And since meaning isn't a static quality, but is dynamically aligned with a player's linear engagement through time with a story world, and can also suggest there are significant implications on a narrative uh, and structure. So this is a wholly different proposition from suggesting that interactivity just means branching ways of seeing the hero's journey play out in predictable form, or a means of seeing the hero's journey not play out according to poor player decisions. Interactivity can subvert the predictability of a hero's journey template. A player's journey is ultimately unavoidably linear insofar as a player moves through time. But the existence of an array of narrative pathways through the spaces created by a game system or by intersecting systems within a game means that players can jump between different structural points on different narrative pathways and thereby experience different structures. So there are my uh, details, that's my um, RPI email and that's uh, uh, write game read, that's how you can contact me on Twitter. Thank you everyone.